Listen, I've spent most of the last week researching the best new items coming in Wrath Phase 4, and let me tell you something, they aren't gonna come cheap. What I found confirmed one thing, you'll need more gold for Phase 4 than you needed for all the other phases combined. There are just so many big ticket items you won't want to miss out on, like the Deathbringer's Will Trinket, the new 264 item level BOEs, and Invincible, which is the most impressive mount in the game. If you're curious on exactly how much gold you'll need to save up, you should check out my Top 10 Most Expensive ICC Items video first. No matter what items you plan to go for, there's no doubt the need for gold making in phase 3 has really ramped up. I've personally settled on farming 150,000 gold to get everything I need from Queldalar to full BOEs on every character and maybe even work on a Shadow more down the road. So here's exactly what I'm doing to save up that gold in the next 45 days. The first thing I'm doing every day is making sure not to miss out on any passive daily gold. I do have jewel crafting on three characters, which means I get over 320 gold per day in just a few seconds turning in the daily. I've managed to pre-farm the jewel crafting daily, which you can do by making the items as you collect them. This is also the time where I take advantage of alchemy transmute on my death knight, where you could easily fit in your titan steel transmutes as well. I also still do a handful of dailies for 200 more gold on my druid per day. That's mainly because the single best perk of dual specking boomkin is just how quickly I can destroy an entire island of Cavaldir. Oh, and of course, you can't forget the daily heroics. I have enchanting on my paladin, so it feels fantastic vacuuming up all the epics. Plus, I definitely want to keep stockpiling emblems for epic gems in Phase 4. The next key thing I'm doing to save up over 150,000 gold is open world gold farming. There are three different fantastic spots in Phase 3 right now, all with different benefits and some small drawbacks. My first favorite spot that I keep coming back to is the Frostflow Cave in Northern Storm Peaks. The Wailing Wind mobs here drop an insanely high amount of crystallized fire. That sells for 3 gold each on Fairlina, and I know the prices are even higher on some servers. The trick here is to bring a friend to farm the upper area while you farm the lower section. And that's because this is a true hyper spawn where the enemies instantly respawn when they're killed. With a good farming class, you can easily push 700 GPH. There's also a side benefit, which is that the crystallized fire sell instantly. That means you can immediately turn around and invest that gold or do flips with it. My second favorite spot is the Woolcloth Farm in the Wetlands. This is a consistent 800 gold per hour farm because you get instant farming mobs that drop wool cloth at a really high rate. On my server, the wool is always worth at least 70 silver and it sells instantly, so this just prints money. I have showcased this farm before in my top 10 open world gold farms video, but I do have a bunch of new optimizations to make it better. The first big optimization is to bring scrap bots, jeeves, and the molly mailbox because this method generates so many inventory problems. Then I like to use speedy auto loot to grab all the wool really fast. Whenever my inventory is full, I can use trade skill master to sell the trash and BOEs to a scrap Bot. I try to maximize scrap bot usage by selling multiple times with one scrap bot. Then whenever my character has a lot of wool, I'll just mail it to my alt using the molly mailbox. One of the big tricks I realized is that the linen cloth is basically worthless, so I started destroying it. Also, having a second alt logged out at the same location able to drop another mailbox and more scrap bots is a huge help. The other farming spot I've started to really enjoy recently is the Ice Crown Converted Heroes. These are a very comfortable 800 gold per hour. I always did this farm wrong in the past by sticking to the wall, and I didn't realize there were way more spawns throughout the entire area. This is definitely one of those farms way better on a class with AoE like a mage, and it's even better with tailoring. These mobs drop a ton of frost weave, and you get even more with the tailoring passive. Another passive gold making bonus like tailoring is subscribing to this channel. You get to be the first to take advantage of new gold making methods without any extra effort on your side. In between open world gold farming, I have another method I like to do to make 1 or 2,000 gold per day. I've really enjoyed doing AFK gold making methods like potion crafting and making leathers recently. The numbers are deceiving because there's still a lot of profit to be made on things like Potions of Speed, Wild Magic, and Mighty Frost. I would definitely recommend crafting everything in the process like the Pygmy Oils and also having Potion Mastery. I also like to do a lot of AFK leatherworking, making things like Heavy Boy in Leather and Heavy Knot Hide. You can't forget classics like Nether Weave Cloth either. I just post a low-priced bait cloth and then anything under 15 silver is pure profit crafting heavy bandages. I'm not just relying on AFK gold making though, since I've also recently begun mastering flipping. Flipping is able to consistently generate me over 4,000 gold per day. I like to primarily do an undercut strategy with fast selling items that I learned from my friend Carrion. The main items I like to flip are things like rare and epic gems, leather working items, and enchanting vellums. I'm using Auctionator for these quick flips, and in order to get your Auctionator to look like mine, you'll need to enable some settings in the options. The main settings you'll need are to show crafting costs and show bag items in the selling panel. I've written up a full doc with the exact steps to profit using the Auctionator undercut method, so check that out below the video too. The main thing is to check prices using Auctionator and then craft 3 to 10 of any given item based on profit. Some of my favorites are the gem flips like the ruined cardinal ruby flip, as well as the leatherworking leg armor flips like the ice scale leg armor. I also love weapon enchants like berserking and mighty spell power too. The key though is that the bigger the number of profitable recipes you craft each day, the more profit you'll make. You can even do better than 
me if you have one of every profession since tailoring and inscription are also very profitable. From the many hours of flipping the last month, the biggest tip I can give you is that the number one spot on any item will always get 99% of the sales. Don't be afraid to run a cancel search and then repost since it's so fast if you have a hotkey set up. The other tip is that raid times are when most of the sales will happen, so don't get into undercut wars at 5 in the morning. Either way, if you don't want to be up until 5 in the morning making gold, you should definitely switch to more profitable professions. There are a bunch of unknown phase 3 profession changes you should know about, so check that video out next.